And we are back. Welcome to my predictions for Wednesday's Champions League games. And let me tell you, I am recording this immediately after Tuesday night's games have finished. So I have just witnessed the absolute travesty that was the penalty decision for PSG against Newcastle. And I'm going to quickly bring up the rules for you right now regarding handball in the Champions League for this season. And you can see them on here. You can read them all now if you want. But the most important bit is this bit right here where it says that in the guidelines for next season, i.e. this season we are currently in, the board recommends, the board being IFAB, that UEFA should clarify that no handball offence should be called on a player if the ball is previously deflected off his own body, in particular when the ball does not go towards the goal. That is exactly what has just happened. The ball deflects off Liveramento's body onto the hand from a cross or cutback from Usman Dembele. Horrendous decision could cost Newcastle a place in the Champions League knockout stages because I think Newcastle defensively deserved to get the win last night or literally 10 minutes ago for me. But yet again, UEFA screw over a Premier League club. And it really is disappointing to see. But that's enough about last night. Of course, you are here on this video to see my predictions for tonight. Champions League games. So if you haven't done so already, please do consider dropping a like on this video, subscribing to the channel if you are new around here, because guess what? It's our favourite day of the week tomorrow, where we do all 32 Europa League and Europa Conference League games. But for now, let's get into all of tonight's action in the Champions League. And we start immediately with the most important game for me. It is Galatasaray against Manchester United in the early kickoff this evening where the task is simple. Manchester United simply have to win to keep the chances of qualification within their own hands. They have to beat Galatasaray and then they have to beat Bayern Munich at home in a couple of weeks' time. And that is, of course, assuming that Copenhagen don't beat Bayern Munich in the other game this evening. But we do start with Manchester United against Galatasaray. And I've looked at it and I've looked at it and... I'm really trying to do this without my bias hat on, but I'm really, really struggling to take that bias hat off right now. Yes, we did lose to Copenhagen, but it was due to a dodgy red card, which then led to a capitulation mentally, which resulted in a 4-3 loss. Outside of that, we've kept clean sheets in our last three Premier League games, including two of them away from home. So... I have to think that with the amount of injuries that Galatasaray have... With Hoyland being back, with Luke Shaw being back, even with Rashford suspended, who was our worst player against Everton. I still think we should win tonight, slash tomorrow night, because I'm recording this yesterday. I'm going to go 2-0 Manchester United. I'm going to do it. I'm going to bat the boys just one last time for this season, because I truly believe we're capable of still pulling this one off. So I'm going to go for 2-0 to Manchester United. Obviously, if you're here for the B word, I think this is a very dodgy game. I think Galatasaray are more than capable of winning. But they do have a lot of injuries. Manchester United are on a semi-good run of form. And I hope it's going to be enough to get us through. Next up, it is Bayern Munich against Copenhagen in the other game in Group A. Bayern Munich have already guaranteed to win the group whatever happens. They're on 12 points. Everyone else is on 4 and 3 respectively. Or 5 and 4 respectively. So... They're not going to probably play their full first team. It's probably going to be a bit more of a fun team from Bayern. But against Copenhagen, even with Copenhagen knowing that if they can get a result against Bayern, it keeps it within their own hands going into the final game week. I just don't think Copenhagen are capable, to be honest. If you look at the results since the Manchester United game, Copenhagen have performed very poorly domestically. They, I think they've drawn and lost since the 4-3 win against Manchester United. So I'm going to go for 4-0 to Bayern. I think when you get experimental teams at this stage of the Champions League with fringe players trying to prove themselves, you end up with actually bigger score lines than what you normally get with the full first team. So I'm going for a heavy win to Bayern. I'd like to say I wish Copenhagen luck, but I really don't because I need them to lose and so Manchester United can get through. But that's how I see Group A going. Let's move on to Group B. And we start off with Sevilla taking on PSV Eindhoven. Two sides that, again, have very mixed forms. PSV are absolutely flying in the Eredivisie, but are seriously, in my opinion, underperforming in the Champions League. Sevilla are just underperforming full stop. They're only on two points in the Champions League group. They're in, like, I think it's 16th at the moment in La Liga. They're not having a good time of it. However, it's coming to that point in the Champions League group 
where Sevilla just pull off that win when they need to to get into the Europa League to inevitably go on and win the Europa League. All form would suggest that PSV are going to win this one. However, I'm going to go for 2-1 to Sevilla because it's just the way that it happens in the Champions League with them. It's always the way it goes. and I just think they're going to pull off one more shock result tomorrow night or tonight as you're watching this video. The other game in the group sees Arsenal taking on Lens or Lons in an attempt to revenge themselves or avenge themselves for that 2-1 defeat in France a few weeks ago. I think they're going to do it. Lons have had a good recovery over the last couple of months after having a horrendous start to the league earned season. But Arsenal at home are unbeaten in their last 12 in all competitions. They're going to win this one tomorrow. And I'm going to go for a 3-1 win. 3-0 win, sorry. I know I said 3-1. A 3-0 win to Arsenal. Which if the results go as they are there, Sevilla, PSV and Lons will all be on five points going into the final game. Which would be very, very interesting. Next up, it is Group C, and it is Sporting Braga taking on Union Berlin. Union Berlin, who have finally started to pick up points both in the Champions League and in the Bundesliga after going 12 games in a row, losing every single one of them. It was a 3-2 win to Braga in the reverse fixture earlier on in the group. And I still think Braga are going to pull off the result this evening. I think Union, despite their mini recovery, it's not been a massive overwhelming. They're now starting to pick up wins. I think Braga at home are going to be too hard to beat and I'm going to go for a 2-1 win for Braga. The other game in this group is Real Madrid against Napoli. Napoli just need to avoid defeat to guarantee qualification to the knockout stages. Real Madrid just need to avoid defeat to guarantee top spot in the group. So do they just play out a casual draw so it mutually benefits both sides? I hope not. I think it's going to be a more open and interesting game. Real Madrid like to be the dominant force in the Champions League and they want to show themselves up as a major contender for this season. And beating the Serie A champions is a great way of doing that. I think it's going to be high scoring. Napoli, of course, have recently changed their manager, which has seen their fortunes turn around with a 2-1 win away at Atalanta at the weekend. But I think this is a step too far for the new man in charge. And Real Madrid are aside full on form at the moment, even with Vinicius out injured. I'm going to go for 3-2. I think it's going to be a fun game, but I think Real Madrid are just going to edge it. And then finally into Group D, where the only question is, who is going to top the group? And sorry, only two questions. Who's going to top the group and who's going to finish in the Europa League spot? Because the group is 10-10-3-3, with Inter and Sociedad currently sitting at the top of the table. Inter Milan take on Benfica in our first game in this group. And they've just been so good defensively, Inter Milan. If you look at their recent run of form in Syria and in the Champions League, they've just not really been conceding too many. It was a one-goal conceded against Juventus at the weekend in a 1-1 draw. Their away record has been very, very good so far this season. And Benfica just haven't been the side they were last season. So I'm going to go for a 1-0 win to Inter Milan. I don't see them running away with it, but I just see them getting that goal probably at some point towards the end of the first half or start of the second half and then seeing out the rest of the game. The other game in the group is Sociedad taking on Salzburg. And again, same sort of situation. Sociedad are so, so good defensively. They don't tend to leak goals. Salzburg are a good attacking outfit, but I don't see them putting a dent in Sociedad. It was a 2-0 win in the reverse fixture, and I'm going to go for 2-0 once again, which will set the group up very nicely for the final round of fixtures, as I say, to determine who will end up as the winners and who will end up in the Europa League. That is going to be it for today's predictions videos. As always, let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments and let me know your thoughts about that handball decision as well last night. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you at roughly 8 o'clock this evening with my post-match reaction to the Galatasaray Manchester United game before we do all of the Europa League and Europa Conference League predictions tomorrow. I will see you then.